so here we are in Photoshop. So I've got this big image here. It's a three pano, a three stitch pano, and there's a bunch of open holes there. So let's see if Photoshop's AI generative fill can do this. So I just click on generative fill. Don't tell it anything special and click on generate. All right, and as we look at what it generated, it's believable down here, but it's actually added stuff that really doesn't exist when I compare it to what, you know, take a look at the difference. Here's what content to where Phil did. Here's where generative Phil did. Now, in some ways, the generative Phil is better, but in other ways, it's worse. For example, if we take a look at the content to where Phil, it does have a tendency to repeat patterns. You can see this area right here, this little mound, and this thing right here, here and here. In fact, let's just zoom in on it and make it easy to see. So you can see we it used the same stuff here and here for this using content to wear fill. So I think maybe the best answer is, well, let's use a combination. Let's take, I'm just gonna take this area, which is the problem area, and let's generative fill just that to fix the problems that content aware fill caused. So that's a little better, but you know what? It's still not perfect. So the, as a variation in order to fix the problems with the repeating patterns caused by content aware, what happens if we just select this area again and do content aware fill, which again, keyboard shortcut is function shift F5. Content Aware Fill does have the advantage of being a heck of a lot faster, and it did a gorgeous job on it. So while Generative Fill, it can be really good at certain things and certain fillings in, you got to try it. Because sometimes Content Aware Fill is still better. And as you just saw there, using Content Aware Fill versus Generative Fill, Generative Fill made up all this stuff that doesn't make any sense, where... First, the one content to where Phil did a great job, but of course created this redundancy here. But just running a smaller piece of it again, got rid of it beautifully. So generative fill is a nice tool. It's just sort of a super duper content to where Phil, but a lot of times content to where Phil still does a better job. So one last thing as I look at this, and as I do love what content to where Phil did, I admit I liked what generative fill did over around here. So maybe the answer is, let's mask out the content aware fill stuff through here. So how do we do that? Well, here's what we do. I'll go to the content aware fill, add a mask. And what I'm gonna do is select, let's see, let's, let's hide it again. I'm gonna select it while I'm in here. So I think, oh, like this area here, generative fill did, then I will come up to our uh, content aware fills here and hit X and I'm going to mask them out. And then I'm going to copy this mask to both. So there we have a combination of the two. And as I'm looking at it, there's a little bit more here. In this one, let's just fix this. Let me set that to 100% and darken that down. And that looks pretty good. There's a combination of the two with both generative fill. So again, if we look at the generative fill, that's the part of generative fill we added compared to just that. So now we get to keep the good part of generative fill and just do the rest with content to wear fill. Again, two great tools. They work really well together. Now, if you want to get silly with content to wear fill, you can do stuff like, well, add a penguin here. Whoop, a penguin. <laughs> it should be interesting to see what a penguin is. There you go. Probably the world's first computer generated penguin. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, yeah, it does stuff like that, but face it, it's kind of silly. Yeah, well, does it does it generate a real penguin? No, no, it's got well, maybe that is what a penguin looks like, but you know, the the are the, there's something weird going on here. It does have this coming down. It, it's kind of interesting, but honestly, uh, in my opinion, Photoshop's generative fill for doing stuff other than filling in parts of the image is basically at this point kind of cartoonish and silly. 
So while Photoshop's generative fill might have a lot of uses and is great for fixing things in Photoshop, like content-aware fill things, uh, or getting rid of problems, if you really want to start getting into generative AI and you want to do things like animals, well, try something like Midjourney. Like I, this morning I just tried, okay, show me two giraffes walking on the beach. Why they're on the beach, I don't know. Maybe that's where giraffes would like to vacation. And also, you guys know me and coffee. So I thought, well, let's see what a a turtle enjoying a coffee at an outdoor cafe might look like. And it turns out, apparently, turtles really like coffee because I got three images generated by Midjourney, and they're a heck of a lot better than the penguin that showed up in Horseshoe Bend. For just coming up with things that are just out of this world, or maybe something that you can use as an inspiration to create your own, like this Oh, Wood Nymph Warrior Princess, who I generated in mid-journey. But wouldn't that be a great idea for a portrait photograph to, to re try to recreate with the right lighting and props? So don't stop creating, don't stop playing, and use the tools that are available to you to create something new. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you online again soon. Bye-bye.